eyes to see, ears to hear. Grant us today, Father, an understanding and perceiving, receiving hearts and minds. We ask for a release from heaven today, Father. Lord, that your will would be revealed and manifest in us, through us, and on us today. And everyone else that would, ever, that would hear these words that you would have to speak. We just loose the spirit of life right now in, in the ministering of your word. In Jesus' name, and we will be hearers and doers of your word. And we know that we'll be blessed as we do. Say amen. 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 I'm going to share with you, as you know, we've been teaching on righteousness. We're going to find our place in uh, John chapter 3. This is something that most of the church world has not gotten. <clears throat> this is very much this the subject that we've been teaching on the subject of righteousness will help help you understand who you are in Christ and it's important that you be a good steward of the word what I mean by that is you take get the CD okay, take your notes go home and listen to it go get your face get in this book and begin to dig out and get what God has been saying to you. You can't grasp it all in the few minutes we have here on Sunday morning. You're only getting bits and pieces. And you got to get in there and let it get deep. Amen? Amen. And it is so important. How many of you have experienced when you listen to the CD again, you got something else out of it that you didn't get before? Yeah, yeah see, that's why we make them available. You know, and they're free. And, you know, so that means there's no excuse. <laughs> and you know what? We're not going to have an excuse the day we stand before him either, are we? No. Because say, he's going to say, I told you, I was revealed. What did you do with it? Chapter 3 and verse 14, we'll begin to read. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have, what, eternal life. For, this is a popular verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. How many of you, I want to hear voices and I want to see hands. How many of you believe on him? How many of you believe in him? Yes. All right, all right. That's part of our message, right? You're going to get it. See, much of the church world has gotten things wrong. They've, they've labeled God as a destroyer. They've also gotten wrong that he's the accuser and the condemner. And he is not the condemner. What does the word condemn mean? It means to be judged down on or against. To be judged guilty. That's what condemn means. So if you've been judged guilty, then what? You're deserving of punishment. Am I right? So if you've been found guilty, you are deserving of punishment. Is that right? Yes. Right. But God did not come to find us guilty, did he? We just said here that he came to save the world, didn't he? He's not here to pronounce punishment on it. If he wanted us guilty, all he had to do was nothing. Because that's how we were and where we were, right? But he did something. He came so we wouldn't be judged. He judged. He was judged in our place. Remember, he was made sin with whose sin? Our sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. So God is not the condemning one. He's not the one condemning you, right? You ever heard somebody be in a service and they say, oh, God, really, the Holy Spirit really condemned me. That No, they got it wrong. He is not the condemner. The Holy Spirit will convict you. 
He will, in other words, he will, that's akin to the word convince. He will convince you of what's true and what's right. See, he, so he's not the condemner. We got to get that, get our words right and get in line. He'll convince you what, what's happening is when the word comes you're, and you're out of line with it, your own heart will condemn you. You'll find that over there in 1 John 3.20. Go over there and read it. Your own heart will condemn you. But that's not God. That's your own heart. Verse 17. Let's read on. For God did not send his world, send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that, that the world through him might be saved. And he who believes in him is not condemned. Who did, did you just raise your hand and say you're a believer? Then does this, does this include you? You are not condemned. Already, be, okay. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. It's been, therefore, okay, if we are not condemned, that means we have not been judged guilty, then what are we? Innocent. And not deserving of punishment. <clears throat> Am I right? I know this; these things may sound strange to us, but they should not be, because it's been pre preached that Jesus has saved you from hell, but it's not been preached that we are the righteousness of God. Hmm. It's not that it's been preached that we've been forgiven, right. but it's not been preached that we've been made right with God and really we've been so much more than just saved from hell and what he's done is so much more than just being forgiven I mean thank God for it I mean hell's enough but thank God for that you know what I mean but there is so much more than just save us people will say well I'm not righteous well, I'm just an old sinner no 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 you 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 know, and they'll say, well, we sin every day. I don't sin every day. Who told you you sin every day? Does the Bible tell you you sin every day? Now, this is important because with these things not being, not coming to light, you'll get, you'll develop a sin consciousness, which the enemy has been at that for a long time. I mean, People will say, well, how do you know you didn't sin? You know, because they have you. I've been in places where they teach you to repent for the sins you don't know you did. Well, I want to know. If I did it, I want to know what I did wrong so I can correct it. So don't tell me I'm an old sinner. Don't tell me I sin. Because if I sin, I ought to know it. Would you know it? This is righteousness is also the life and the nature of God. Remember over in Hebrews, he said... In that day, there shall be none say, No, the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the greatest to the least of them, right? And I'll put my commandments and all my statutes, I'll write them on the tablets of their heart. What's he doing? He's putting himself. What's this commandment? It's his word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, the word was with God. That word is the light of men, that word is his life. He's putting his life and his nature inside of you. And we shall all know him. Do you see that? So it is the righteousness being made righteous is also the very life and the nature of God. I'm not a sinner. I used to be. Well, and it's either you're either saved or you're not, right? You're either a believer or you're not. You can't be an old sinner and be saved, <laughs> right? You're either a saint. Or you ain't <laughs> saved. Do you follow me? You're either, there's not a third category. You're either a saint, made righteous, or you're not. Well, our righteousness is a filthy rag. Yeah, but I'm not talking about my righteousness. I'm talking about his righteousness. We were made righteous with his righteousness. That's my boast. My boast is in him, not me. Right? That's where our boast is, is in him. And the Bible says there's, we can't do anything good enough to ever earn. There's only two ways that you could ever believe that you could be made right with God. Do you realize that? And one of them is to by your own works. 
doing good enough, long enough, that you get in the Bible says you can't do that. And what's the other way? By what? Faith in Jesus. We just read it. We just read it. We are not condemned because I'm a believer in Jesus. Amen. So you are not condemned. Glory. You've been judged innocent. That's one of the definitions of the word righteousness. Innocent. <laughs> right? All right. Remember in uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, he was made sin with our sin for what? What, what did that accomplish? Put it up here, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, if you would, please. What did that accomplish? What was the purpose of him being made sin with our sin? So that, so that it would accomplish us being made righteous with his righteousness. We being made, manufactured, created. See, it's not something that I did. Verse 18, what does it say? He who believes in him is not condemned. He who does not believe is condemned already. He's condemned because he's already been judged with the curse of this world. That's what the world doesn't know. They don't have to be condemned. Just believe on Jesus. Oh, man, I love him. Do you love him? <laughs> oh, I believe in him. I'm not guilty. I love him for that. Praise him for that. Romans 8, 1. Do you remember that? You, some of you will remember that verse. There is therefore no condemnation. That's right. Get to know it. That's not a fancy quote. This is the Word of God inspired by the Holy Spirit written down for you and I to get and put into us. Right? There is therefore now. When? Now. No condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. No condemning. That means there's no judgment. There's no guilt. There's no shame. Remember, he bore my shame. He bore my sicknesses and diseases. He took all of that guilt. He took it. So there's no reason for you and I who believe on him to be guilty or ashamed. That's why you don't say to your kids, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. No, don't, don't put that on them. That's a curse. That'll develop a sin, or as we found out, an evil consciousness. But see, the church has not taught some of these things. In fact, we've been taught, that the church has taught, um, taught to sing about your sin. Sing about how unworthy you are. How unworthy you used to be. All the thing, how you messed up, how you fell short. But that's not Bible. There's nowhere in the Bible that tells you to talk about your sin or your unworthiness. Amen. Is there? Amen. Nowhere. Amen. Bible doesn't tell you to talk about your failures, your mistakes. Nowhere. What's what Paul say? I'm putting it all behind me and I'm looking forward. Lord. The good, the bad, the ugly, everything. I keep on pressing towards the mark. That's what we're doing. This is allowing that force of righteousness to begin to strengthen you so that you don't keep falling. And so that you don't keep falling, doing sin and getting into these things. It's a strength. It's a spiritual force. Glory to God. You know, but why do people do that? Why do they think about those? Why? Well, first off, we know it's the devil, but it's religious tradition that has replaced the Bible. And what's it doing? Jesus didn't come to condemn us. It's, what that does is put a guilty consciousness inside of us, and it makes us weak and undermines our faith so that we become faithless. Jesus isn't condemning us. God's not con condemning us. Like I said, there's not a third category. We're either a saint or we're not. Which are you? Amen. That's right. That's right. Are you righteous or are you condemned? Right. That's right. That's right. Are you washed clean and innocent? Yes. Yeah. Huh? Or are you guilty and deserving punishment? No. Right? Is there, do you have eternal life? or death. See, it's either one or the other. You're either righteous or you're not unrighteous. Or you're unrighteous. Right? You need to practice that a little bit. <laughs> really. Are you just a little bit sinner? Or are you the righteousness of God? 
Come on. Like I said, there's not, there's not a category of gray. Some people think there is. You know, you, it's either, well, as one fellow said, he said, it's too black and white with you. I took it as a compliment. He didn't mean it as a compliment. <laughs> because he liked this area of compromise. Either you're healed or you're not. Either you're forgiven and washed clean or you're not. Which one are you? Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. Then, huh? Yes. Then you're washed clean yes. and you are forgiven. Yes. This has got to be black and white inside of you. You got to draw the line. Either you are or you're not. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Begin to find Proverbs. Well, because what will happen as you make, begin to define your life by these scriptures that I'm talking to you about righteousness, it will begin to do something inside of you that the Bible calls being bold. Verse 28, or chapter 28, verse 1. And what's it say? Do you have it up there? When the wicked flee. Why are they fleeing? There's something going on that makes them run. Why? Well, the second half of that verse gives us some light into that. What's it say? Because the righteous are bold as a lion. Have you been made righteous? So there is a descriptor about what you ought to be. It's not something you have to work up. You have to practice it to let it develop and come out of you and get stronger in you. People, I know religion doesn't like this, and religious folk don't like it. They'll say it's arrogance or pride. Arrogance is bad. Pride is evil. But it is not. This is a good thing. This is a godly thing. Did we just read this? Out of the Bible. This is a godly thing. People that don't know the difference, they will perceive it and call and call it pride or arrogance. There was a particular domination of a minister, pastor, and um, he had me there ministering some healing and things. And and I get pretty bold sometimes. And uh, he came there and said, you're the most prideful man I ever knew. <laughs> no, it wasn't pride. My boast is in the Lord. It's not on what I did. I didn't heal anybody. It's God. It's His work in me. It's I'm letting His life flow out of me. And that's what you need to do. And you're going to find out boldness is a key to getting results. Because the righteous are what? Bold as a lion. You ever look into the eyes of a lion? I'm not talking about one. It's probably much different than one that's grow up, you know, in a cage, pacing back and forth, compared to one that's that's been raised out in out in the well, out in the jungle, you know, where it's eat or be be eaten. I'm not talking about being raised on the streets. I'm talking about out in the jungle, man, where it's life or death. I know National Graphic had some footage, and and I believe this is why God chose the lion rather than some other big cat. There were five tigers came on this male lion and he stood them all down. You ever look in, can you imagine looking into the eyes of a lion? How about looking into the eyes of Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah? Do you think you would see any boldness? Do you think you'd see any authority or any strength inside of them eyes? That's what ought to be coming out of you. I'm telling you the truth. There was a big bull elephant and some other footage, National Grid, Geographic, and that lion, you know, he's sitting there. He looked at him. He stared that guy right down. Like, you want a piece of this? <laughs> that big bull elephant backed up. <laughs> Glory to God. This is key to getting results. Those lions are absolutely fearless. Do you know that? I mean... You can, you can have, it don't matter what kind of gun you have, he's looking at you like you're a snack and you ain't going to, even if the, you shoot him and kill him, but it ain't going to scare him. Right. 
You come in there with the biggest, baddest elephant gun you can come up with, and he's going to look at you like a snack, man. He's still, you're not going to scare him away. Well, how about the righteous? How about the righteous? Hmm? Huh? Should we be? And, and this hasn't been preached. Not like it should be. The righteous are what? Bold, Bold as a lion. People have thought, you know, they had the wrong idea of being humble. You know, like you're supposed to come and plead at the gates of heaven. Oh, please, God. Oh, please. Please, so I know I'm so unworthy and, and I know we don't deserve it, but please, if you can, see a way, Father, some way. Please, please help. God, please make the devil leave us alone. He's been kicking me up and down the streets. Please, Lord, if you can, help us out in some way. But that may not be exactly the same words, but that's the spirit that a lot of Christians and a lot of the church has been teaching us to carry. Am I right? Do you remember what the Hebrew said? How do we come before the throne and obtain mercy? Boldly. Because that's an attribute that's part of the character. Is God timid? Do you remember He has not given us a spirit of timidity or fear? But one of what? Power, love, and a sound mind. Yes. That's the life. That's the character. That's some of the attributes of God. What should we be like? It, I apologize. My voice gets loud. I, I don't mean to be loud. But, it, you know, it like stirs it up in me. Because this is what we ought to be. Does the Bible... Uh, tell us that we're supposed to come and beg? Religion has made Christian beggars. Does the Bible tell us to beg? No, he says come boldly and the word receive is the same word other places take. Come and take it. Come and get it. That's what the word receive means. Take it. And how do you take it? Boldly. Boldly come before the throne of grace. Does that mean we grovel and beg? Yeah. No. No. Religion has taught us to be beggars. But the real righteous ones, the real righteous believers are what? We just read it. Come on. Are what? The righteous are what? Bold as a lion. See, some of y'all ain't even saying bold. Boldly. <laughs> See, you ought know, to practice it. I'm telling you. And the reason the devil don't like this is because he doesn't want a, uh, he doesn't want millions of believers going around being bold, kicking his tail, messing up his playhouse, mm -hmm. taking the things that he's stolen from us. He don't want that. That's why he's worked to develop doctrines that are contrary to the New Testament. He wants people to believe and stay in a continuous state of shame and guilt and condemnation because then they will be faithless and weak and powerless and not able to help anybody, which won't be a threat to him. They'll be weak and defeated because a sin consciousness causes you to draw back and to fear. Did you hear me? This is why there's a lot of fear in believers. They don't know that they've been remade the righteousness of God. They've not developed and revealed this, this force so that they're bold and fearless. Did we just read the righteous are what? Bold as a scared little cat? Bold as a scared little pussy cat? Or, scared, or, or what? Bold as a lion? Come on. Are you catching what God's saying to you? I know it, it, it'll rub your flesh a little bit. It'll rub the way you've been brought up. It, it's something different. But am I reading you scripture? Oh, yeah. glory to God. Hallelujah. 
in the kingdom of God, we've got to be bold and step forward. Step out. Stretch your hand out. Press through the crowd. That's how people in the Bible got their stuff. Did you know that? They didn't shrink back in the corner of the house, playing humble, trying to be, you know, this humility game. Did they? True humility is acknowledging the word. That's what true humility is, acknowledging the word. That word is true no matter what. The enemy would try to be have us confused into making us think it is pride or arrogance. I'm bold, but the only reason I'm bold is because of what Jesus did. It's not based on what I did. It's not what I got for myself. It's what he got for me, and I got it. Are you going to get it? That's right. I'm not going to sit in the corner and be mealy mouth about it. Because it's real and it's powerful. It's strong. Can you say glory to God? Glory. Hallelujah. Let me tell you some of the symptoms of not knowing or not believing that you've been made the righteousness of God. I, don't, I won't get very far. I'm going to give you one of them. People that haven't believed or doesn't know that they've been made the righteous of God, haven't developed it, they're afraid. They're ashamed. They're condemned. They're always feel, feeling guilty about something. Which means they're always thinking that they deserve punishment. When something bad happens, they go, oh man, I knew it. I figured that was going to happen. You, ever, you, ever, you know what I'm talking about? They were really kind of expecting it. Why? Because on the inside they're feeling guilty. That's punishment coming. I know I knew a, bad, a lot of bad stuff. I know I did it. I knew it was coming. They always talk about how unworthy they are. What sinners they are. They're continuously saying, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Their prayers are like begging. Even when they're talking about or praying about specific things. You know, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. Of what? <laughs> forgive me of what? See, they're feeling guilty. They're feeling shame. They're feeling like they're expecting punishment for what? Have we been forgiven? Yes. Of what? How much sin? Part of it? How much? All of it. All of it. That was weak. <laughs> they said you should ask the Lord to forgive you. For what? For what? See, that's just being easily duped into receiving condemnation and have a continuous state of guilt. Well, I missed it. But like I said, I want to know where I missed it. The bolder you get, uh, where do I want to go from here? You know, before I come in here to speak, <clears throat> if I'm going to do any good for you today, I can't be mealy mouth about it. I need to go and study, be in faith. So that I have something to give you. And I need to pray in faith. I need to step up here in faith. And act like God is real. Act like this is true. Because it is true. It is real. And the bold, you'll find that the bolder you get. I've already said it. But I want you to grab it. If you don't grab anything else today. The bolder you get. The more results you'll see. When you're bold about it. It happens. When you bold about it, it comes to pass. Yay. <laughs> that was important. 
It is. That's why I'm waiting for it to sink in. The bolder you are, when you're bold about it, it happens. The bolder you are, the more results you will get. It's not humility to come in here and say, well, I don't know. Some people believe and some people don't, you know, and it may be this and it may be that. In other words, don't pay attention to me. <laughs> I'm just an old sinner. I'm doing the best I can. It ain't much, and really, it ain't much. But in other words, why'd you come? Why'd you even bother coming to listen? Please pray for me. I mean, it's not funny, but that's there's some form of that that's going on every day in church because people are confused about this. They say, bless his heart, he know, he's so humble. No, he's not humble, he's weak and faithless. And he doesn't believe the Bible. The Bible says what? The righteous are what? Bold as a lion. Bold, what makes me bold? Being made, knowing that I've been made right. Knowing that I have a right to approach the throne of the Father. I have a right to come to Him. I mean, I can come up right through the crystal sea, past all the cherubim, go right by the four and the 24 elders and go right up and say, Father, He's my daddy. Amen. I have a right to be there. You have a right to be there. You have a right to go before him. Amen. That's how you can be bold. Because I have faith in his son. I have faith in the name. I have faith in the blood of Jesus that has washed me clean, purged me of all my sin, and made me the righteousness of God. Put a new spirit within me. He breathed his own spirit upon me and in me. That's what you have. Of course you're right. It's him you have. You can't be anything else but right. Say bold. 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 Say bold. bold. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. See, when you're bold and you know you're right and the enemy comes against you, you come up and say, get out. And you know, you remember I gave you an example about somebody? I'm not going to say it. They didn't know it was right. They didn't know they were the person in authority. And there was this horse that was messing with them. Kept biting, just nipping on, messing with him, playing with him, doing it for fun. The horse was a lot like me. We, spunk, we hung out a lot together. So he picked up some of my traits. And he just kept nipping and kept biting. And I said, he, he, the guy was there, he complained to me, whining about it. And I said, well, slap him in the nose and say no. Or bit him again. Right? He turned around and goes, Stop. I looked at him, I said, dude, you deserve to be bit. See, but what are we doing when circumstances are coming against us? When sickness disease comes near my dwelling, when the, when the devil starts messing with my kids, when he starts making my house go away, what do you do when your finances are, are, are locked up? Come on, what do you do? You be bold. Because you're the righteous. You are in authority. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. You can rejoice because you carry the, the authority of the kingdom of God. Amen. You carry the name. You've been given the name. Above every name. You, you come up this sickness and you say, get out in the name of Jesus. Satan, get out of here. Get off of my kid. And you know what? If you can't convince the people around you that you have something good, you're certainly not going to convince the devil. You're not going to raise the dead by being timid. You're not going to cast out demons by being tim timid and fearful and carrying guilt and shame like you don't really belong. I remember the first time that I came upon a dead person. It just came out of me. I speak life to you in the name of Jesus. I said it three times. I speak life to you in the name of Jesus. And the person doing CPR looks up and says, thank you. 
And the guy began to set up. It wasn't me. But I had to be a bold vessel to speak the word. How did Jesus say? Did Jesus come begging? Oh, God, Father, Father, I need your help. Did he do that? How did Jesus handle the devil? How did Jesus handle sickness? How did he handle those things? Come on. He was bold. And what? He spoke to the mountain. He spoke to the problem. He spoke to the demon. And he wasn't timid about it. I believe there was a fire in his eyes. I believe he had them lying eyes, man. It's one of the things we do when we're doing deliverance, man. You look right in the eyes. Man, I'll tell you what. That devil sees something inside of you. When you know who you are. Got to know who you are. That's why we're going to come in agreement here. There's going to there's a corporate anointing here. Glory to God. Is your heart still open? You still entreating that anointing? That spirit of peace and wholeness? Stand your feet. We're going to be bold. Because why? We're innocent. We have the right. We have the privileges. We have the name. We have the blood. Hallelujah. We're going to begin to command sickness to leave your bodies. We're going to begin to command organs to function. If your testosterone, your hormone levels are low, you can begin to command them up where they're supposed to be. If your eyes aren't right, command them to see. If your ears are closed, command them to open up. If your arteries are plugged, command them to be open and free and clean in the name of Jesus. Come on up, guys. In the name of Jesus, because you carry the name. You have the righteousness of God. You are the righteousness of God. And the righteousness of what? Oh, come on. I'm not been preaching for half hour for nothing. The righteous are what? Oh. You stand up in the face of that devil and say, Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And no weapon, no spirit formed against me. No man shall stand before me all the days of my life. Because I bear the name of God. I have the name. You have the name. The whole family and heaven and earth is named. By what name? What name? Jesus. Jesus. And he is for you. Who can be against you? Get me excited. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. How do you want me to do this, Lord? Hallelujah. People. That don't know this. How do I come boldly? He's my father. Many people don't come boldly because they just plain simply don't know him. Do you know him? Amen. Even if you know him just a little bit, you know him. Can we know him more? Yeah. I've got confidence in him. I've got confidence in his word. This is, again, this is not based on feeling. This is true humility. It says you've been made righteous. It says you've been washed clean. So what are you? Even though you don't look righteous, you may, be, you may look ugly and shameful. You may look guilty. But what are you? Right. You're innocent. Right. You're the righteousness of God. That's true humility. You say, look, I'm believing that word no matter what I feel like, what I look like, what I act like. This is who the word says I am. And as long as I stand on it, I'll begin to be changed, transformed from the inside out more and more into the very image of God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Begin to just close your eyes and begin to magnify the name Jesus that's been exalted above every name. You'll find in Hebrews 1, he's even exalted that name of Jesus above the Father's name because he loved righteousness and hated iniquity. And that name has been given to us it's not doing anything in heaven. It's been given to men. No other name among men by which man may be saved. This name, the whole family in heaven and earth has been named. You have a, you bear a name. You now stand in kingdom authority. And believe me, there's no authority above the kingdom of God. 
I'm telling you who you are. Don't get mad at me. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. You can do what the Bible says you can do. You can be what the Word says you are. What is the mountain that you're facing? Where is it? You know, my, my own daughter told me something the other day. I was shocked that she remembered it. Because somebody had lost something. And she said, oh, don't just do what Kenny told me to do. And I said, what was that? She said, I've been doing it for you, and it works every time. She said, I tell that devil, get your stinking hands off of my stuff and bring it back. And she said it works every time. Have you lost anything? Tell the devil to get his stinking hands off of it. Tell him to get his hands off of your kids and your grandkids. Tell him to get your hands off of my finances. Get your hands off of my body. Get your stinking hands off of my marriage in the name of Jesus. Come on, anybody with me? Why are you quiet? Why are you quiet? Why aren't you praising him? Oh. Now, come on, be bold and begin to speak to that mountain. Begin to tell that devil, get your hands off of my body. Get your hands off of my blood. Get your hands off of my organs. Get your hands off of my life in the name of Jesus. It's too quiet in here. It's too quiet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your, I believe. I recognize him. I've been saved by Almighty God through the name of the Son of Jesus. The Jesus, the Son, I've been saved. I'm delivered. I'm healed. Hallelujah. Come on, proclaim it. Proclaim it. Unless it comes down in your mouth and faith, he can't do anything about it. Hallelujah. The righteous are what? Bold. Bold. Come on, I want to see some boldness. I'm going to see some expression of this life, the righteousness in you. Come on. Hallelujah. God wants to see an expression of this force to release the force of righteousness right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. There is Hallelujah. Blood us open up in Jesus' name. 